Good day. I hope this finds you well. My name is Hala Jabber and today I'm going to be sharing with you how really listening to stories changed how I understood and improved my practice of community music. As a young girl, I grew up listening to stories. I loved to make them up, to read them and enjoy telling them to other people. I invite you to take a moment and remember a story that you heard, engaged with, or have been told in your past. It could be when you were a child, or maybe last month, or even last week. Do you remember the story fully, exactly as it was told? Do you remember every single detail? Do you have the same understanding of that story now as when you were a child? or when you heard it last week. If you are to tell the story more than one time, would you tell it the same way, with the exact same details every time? I remember fractions of stories that I was told as a child, and in honesty, I can't be sure that what I remember is the original version or an adaptation that my brain had made up because each time a person tells and retells their story, they add new experiences or new perspectives to it. This presentation comes from my doctoral research and the impact of its learning is still happening in my work as a community musician. My arts practice research investigated the best approaches to community music spaces, using them as a tool for integration in the context of post-conflict migration, which I used practice as research. And according to Nelson, that means that I used my practice of community music as a key method to investigate my research questions. In this kind of research, my role as a community musician and researchers were equally important. And as Nimco Lat reminds us, that there is an intertwinement between the research and the practice. Part of my facilitation style is to provide the space for people to socialize with some refreshments, if possible. This is not just at the start or the end of the workshop. It's well thought out and normally embedded in the middle as a crucial complementary part to making music. In those moments, stories emerge, stories of participants' lives, whether it be their culture, their traditions, how they became refugees or asylum seekers, and at time, conflict and trauma stories come. It was necessary to use narrative inquiry to understand the impact of the stories on the participants' lives and their degree of engagements in the workshop. A narrative inquiry is a way to understand experiences within a set time frame and space. People share their experiences through stories indicating who they are and their perception of the other as they make sense of their past through these stories. Stories are important because they can help us make sense of the complexities of the social world in which we live in and how we go about thinking, acting and making meaning in our lives. Narrative query contains three dimensions. Temporality, which refers to the time frame in which the event is taking place within the participants' lives. The sociality, that indicates the conditions where personal feelings, hopes, and desires of both the researcher and the participants are included. The place is where the event is happening and how it shapes who we are. During this research, these three dimensions were negotiated very carefully, aiming to maintain the integrity and originality of the participants' stories. And that included excluding some stories. For example, if stories were shared outside the workshop space and time, they were deemed as private and they were not included within the research. And once we started sharing our stories, we started finding similarities between us. We started to relate to each other's experiences, establishing a feeling of familiarities because all participants, including myself, were impacted by conflict and forced migration. And we all had an experience of, of conflict in our own countries. 
It helps us break down cultural barriers and establish a more relaxed atmosphere. We always found similarities in our stories, even though we came from different parts of the world. When you listen to someone's story, they become more approachable, more relatable, and sometimes even more humane in our eyes. It allowed participants to start trusting each other and start making friendship connection, which is important to say that some are still happening until this day. And then it helped us provide a sense of where the participants are at what is impacting them and what is important to them. And because if you do not tell and retell our stories, we would have no coherent notion of who we are, where we are going, what we believe, what we want, where we belong and how to be. The stories that participants shared in the workshops during the coffee break made their ways into our songwriting process. I'm sharing one of the song and I do invite you to take a moment to read the lyrics. The song lyrics you see here were, were written through a story about a situation and the conditions the participants were living in, how they were feeling about it. The story is filled with metaphor, the witch, the owl, and even some characters that did not make it into the song, one of which was a seed. But the essence of the story and song revolved around the perception of being trapped and unable to be free. Because in the song and story, there was no indication that the owl was hurt or even if was it tied down, it just could not fly. The owl inability to fly was a metaphor for all the rules and regulation forced in detention centres weighing the participants down and making them wait, unable to, to fly to freedom and start their new life. Becoming a reflexive and reflective researcher practitioner was a necessity to maintain the integrity of the participants' stories and present them as objectively as possible without adding my own interpretation to them. As a researcher practitioner who works in the context of post-conflict migration, I fully understand that stories with traumatic background may rise. It is my role in maintaining the safety of the space to ensure that the stories, conversation, music making are all safe and not overwhelming or re-traumatizing to everyone present, and that includes myself. To do so, I first needed to position myself and understand my experience of conflict because my reactions to those stories, to the music making, will be based on this experience. And for us as researchers, it is important to negotiate their own story background and acknowledging their personal experiences, their biases and their opinion when listening to people's stories. It's important to comprehend how their past experiences impacts on their engagement and understanding of the shared narrative. And what is their responsibility when documented participants' stories? What other verifying tools they can use, such as documentation or reconfirming with the participants what they meant in their story? This, as Berger reminds us and indicates that being reflective recalls on one personal characteristics, including gender, race, experiences, beliefs and political stances and ideologies. It is important to note that becoming reflexive and reflective does not happen overnight. It's a process that we need to embed in our practice and in our research. And this will help us become more aware of the impact of the research practice and narratives that are shared within our own space. It is, I only recently started to fully understand the difference between being reflective and reflexive through a course that I'm doing with Social Health Ireland. And I'm presenting you with some of the different ways that I've been learning to start asking questions. In being reflective, what is important to you in this incident? What feelings are you left with? And what unsettles you as you think about this? In being reflexive, how have you influenced the situation? Are you taking a particular stance or role here? How has my personal story influenced, shaped my understanding 
in of this incidence or workshop. And I strongly believe that we need to practice both ways of asking questions. Currently, I'm a postdoc fellow. Uh, I'm working to understand what information trainings and workshops an art facilitator may need before and during working in the context of post-conflict migration. This includes, but not limited to, incorporating an understanding of trauma-informed approaches into our practice. It is worth to note that in my research so far, there's a highlight that the need for practitioners to situate and position themselves and have an awareness of their own trauma prior to commencing a work in this area. Thank you for listening.